Pat Gilroy side showed the necessary character to see off battling Armagh at Crow Park with Brian Cullen and Barry Cahill drafted in. Dublin had an early goal opportunity, but Alan Brogan drove his effort wide. Paddy O'Rourke's men opened the scoring, Kieran McKeever collecting a pass before shooting over. Stevie McDonald pointed a free to put Armagh two points up, but Bernard Brogan was immense for Dublin, scoring nine points in total. For his first, his brother Alan was a supplier, and Bernard pointed the way. Two minutes later, the same combination worked a treat again, this time Bernard doing the needful from a difficult angle. That reduced the deficit to a point, but Armagh reeled off three points without reply, including this excellent point from Brian Mallon to open up a six points to two lead. The signs were ominous for Dublin at that stage and the momentum was with Armagh. But Bernard Brogan steadied the ship with three points before Stephen Cluxton landed a 45 to leave it level at half-time, six points apiece. The two sides traded points early in the second half. Stevie McDonnell was well marshalled by Rory at Carroll throughout. The Armagh talisman got free to land this super score. With Armagh turning over a lot of ball, Dublin pressed on again, and this inspirational score from defender Philly McMahon put them three points clear, ten points to seven. But credit to Armagh, who fought their way back into it, a point down with nine minutes to go when Brian Mallon was denied a goal by a brilliant goal line clearance by Philly McMahon. After that, Dublin drove on to victory. Their bench had an impact. Paul Flynn splitting the posts before another of the subs, Eamon Fennell, sealed the win with this late score. A match short on quality, but plenty of excitement. And so Dublin march on. A win which will help their confidence no end. Armagh, a side in transition, must look to next year. Final score at Croke Park, Dublin 14 points, Armagh 11 points. We're disappointed I've lost it. I do believe the team has made progress. Uh, we're in Division 1 next year. We have to build on, on, on what we have done up to now and be a stronger team come Championship time next year. Take it one step at a time. We've learned that over the years, you know, that uh, it's going to be tough now. We'll have This will be our third game now next week, you know, in three weeks, and, and, and you just have to use your panel now. And, um, you know, we're, we're, we're delighted that we're in the next round. That was the, the name of the game. Boyd on by good wins against Clare and Waterford in recent weeks, awfully brought an air of optimism into their game here. And they got the perfect start. Kieran McManus with this high, hopeful ball in and around the house. Niall McNamee did well to gather at the expense of Damien Rafferty, played it off to Ken Casey, and he rattled the net in just the second minute. Further goals went to begging though for Offaly in the opening quarter. Casey could have had a second, and then McNamee involved in this effort when he played in his teammate Graham Gilfoyle, he was unfortunate though to see the shot come back off the post. Calming scores from the ground from Marty Clark playing senior football for the first time this year kept down in touch and they trailed by just three points at the break. Down took a little longer than permitted at half time and left awfully waiting. When they did emerge from the dressing room they were straight to business. Mark Poland kicked this free. And then came the vital score. A well worked move, Benny Coulter involved at the start. Callum King too, and also Mark Poland. Eventually the ball was worked to the unmarked Aidan Carr. And really, Alan Mulhall and the Offaly goal stood little chance of denying him the three-point score. Once down got their noses in front, they were not for turning. Substitute Daniel Hughes also got in on the scoring act. Offaly introduced John Coughlin from the bench, and his work off the ball combined with good play here from Niall McNamee set up this score for the midfielder, Barry Connor. But it was all to prove in vain for the faithful as they never managed to make up the two-point difference. Down March on and are now within 70 minutes of the quarter-finals. It was just all about the result tonight. Um, we were very slow coming into the blocks and full crowd off. They came pouring at us right through the middle of our defence and it was very difficult to see where we were going to stem the tide. But thank goodness our guys showed a wee bit of leadership around the middle and we got a wee bit of a grip tip with about 10 minutes to go in the first half. And in the second half we obviously played better but we just couldn't pull away from them. The first uh, 15 minutes when we created a lot of good goal chances. Um, but I have to take an awful lot of positives out of it. An awful lot of the young players played exceptionally well. They probably proved for the first time this year that we're capable of playing at that intensity and pace. Um, and you know we, they are improving the whole time, and it's you know it's a confidence thing with a young team. Okay, then let's talk maybe first about the Dublin Armagh match with our audience. Colly Moran, how significant was it the victory for Dublin in your view? 
That was a very significant victory, Des, especially after the Mead game and conceding five goals. The priority was about getting things right defensively, and they did that. Armagh had a very dangerous full forward line with Stevie McDonnell and Jamie Clark, and they held them to 11 points. And just generally, as a unit, they were defending a lot better than they had been previously and uh, working very hard all around the pitch. So it was about confidence as well. Armagh have been a bit of a bogey team for Dublin over the last few years, and to take a big scalp like that is, is a big step in the right direction. Uh, I spoke to Colly on the radio yesterday, and we got a text in saying we sounded like the British media with England in the World Cup. We were hyping them up too much. In an overall context, where are Dublin? Uh, when, when you compare them to what we saw from Cork and Kerry and Munster and Tyrone today up in Ulster, they're a bit behind those yeah. teams, obviously. But it's about like they've drawn loud tonight uh, for next weekend, and that's going to be a difficult game for them. But yeah. it's about showing progress every day they go to the, uh, take yeah. to the field, and, and they are moving in the right direction. They're probably, based on yesterday's performance, a bit over-reliant on Bernard Brogan up front for the scores, and they do need more scoring uh, forwards, but hopefully they can improve on that. All right, we'll chat about the next week's matches in a while. Oshin McConville from Armagh is here. What, what's the reaction to the result in Armagh, Oshin? Well, we're not that pleased, <laughs> Des, I suppose, first and foremost. Um, we would have felt that the dubs were there for the taking yesterday, and uh, that didn't prove to be the case. You know, I think, you know, as Colley said, you know, Dublin were relying on Bernard Brogan, and I suppose at the other end of the field we were relying on Jamie Clark and Stephen McConnell for the bulk of our scores, and it just wasn't happening yesterday. We lost a physical battle, and that's something that... I suppose would be the most disappointing thing from an Armagh point of view is that physically Dublin would have bullied us a little bit. We turned over the ball too much and generally speaking we were second we were second best yesterday. But I think we have made a little bit of progress on the Paddy Rock. We're yeah. playing Division One football next year, so hopefully that'll benefit us. Right. Well Dublin play Loud then next week. Colin Kelly from Loud is here. I suppose Colin, everyone's wondering how are, how are the Louds players reacting now? There's a week gone since the drama and trauma of last week. Yeah, I suppose there's the they're delighted in a way that it's over. There was a lot of it was it was a media circus really for them for a day or two. And and to be honest with you, after the game on Sunday night, everyone just wanted closure on it and to move on. And um, they have a real life they have a real life chance against Dublin next Sunday. Um, for obvious reasons, I thought they were fantastic against Mead last Sunday. And you know they're going into the Dublin match in a different frame of mind than they have in the past, where they've taken drubbings from a Dublin team. Where next Sunday they go in with you know they've the confidence is high if they, if they look in the positives from right they didn't. They didn't actually get a cup or a medal last Sunday, but you know, in everyone's eyes, they won a Leinster championship. But they're fired up anyway. The next year. Absolutely, yeah. I think there's there's a calmness about them this year, and the way they're playing, stemming from the from the Kildare results. You know, they've just grew in confidence, right. and and every Sunday they go out, they're, they're playing well. They did stumble a little bit against Westmead, but I suppose semi-finals are about winning again in the Leinster final. They were fantastic, so they've a real life chance against yeah. Dublin. You're sitting beside Graeme Gerrity of Mead. You're the only loud man and Mead man sitting together, I'd say, for the last week. But Graeme, is there any danger that there would be a negative effect on the Mead players, all the, the circus that went on? Uh, I don't think so. They've regrouped. Um, they've like, met a couple of times since, and uh, you know, they're trying to pull it behind themselves as well. Uh, it's unfortunate that it was left to, I suppose, the players and the, the Mead County Board to, you know, to give a replay or not. Um, I think the GA copped out on, on that decision. There should be something you know, put in place there that, you know, they can decide whether it's going to be replayed or not. But, uh, you know, they've put it all behind them now, the back training, and, you know, they're just looking forward to their next game. And a word about Down, because I know you were involved with Longford, mm. uh, and you really put it up to Down. Down beating Offaly there. What do you make of Down? Um, it's very hard uh, mm. at the minute to see where Down are going. Uh, they're rebuilding there as well. And Marty Clark is back.